So it's always an exciting day when your seed potatoes arrive. Um, I bought mine from Marshalls. I like getting them from there because if you've got any problems, then they send you can send them back and just get a refund or a replacement. And I have had to do that actually in the past. So this time I don't think I'm going to have to because they look lovely. So I thought I'd just show you what I've got. So the first one is Estima. And I've got this as an, an early baking potato. And apparently it's an amazing baking potato. It's a second early. And we're going to grow that super early for a harvest in, well, about sometime June, July sort of time. So we'll see how that goes. This is a new one to me. So the second one that I've got is Charlotte, an old favorite picked fairly early it's a brilliant new potato and uh, left to mature in the ground it's a great general purpose potato and again we use this as an early baking potato but we're still harvesting them now and we'll be harvesting them all the way through until april probably we grow all of our potatoes nearly all of our potatoes in containers and we've got enough um, still uh, that we're storing in the in the containers to last us until I would say early April. By then, my early potatoes will be ready. So, you know, we, we have a continuous supply of potatoes all year round. So Charlotte and they look great, don't they? Really nice. They're just starting to sprout. So very perfect for just to start chitting. So the next one that I've got is Nicola. So I've seen a few of my favourite YouTubers, uh, Steve from Digwell Greenfingers for example I think, raving about Nicola and as an alternative to Charlotte. Now I do like to kind of cover my bets, I do like to have some different varieties uh, in the ground just in case one for example the weather conditions don't agree with it or whatever and so I still have a reasonable harvest so I thought I would try Nicola although to be honest we've always been happy with Charlotte but you never learn if you don't try something new so my favoured early potato is Swift they grow as a really nice kind of compact plant and everybody seems to love them. So I really like Swifts and yeah, I'm pretty pleased with these. Again, they're just, they're a bit further on. So they're just, some of the sprouts are getting caught in the net, but uh, they should be fine. And I'm pretty pleased about getting these because I don't have any Swift, uh, say from last year. Um, so yeah, I need to get my early started and I'll be starting them. I think I can't remember hundred percent, but I think I'm starting them at the end of January and I'll actually just put up by the side of this video here, uh, all of my successions of potatoes and when I'm going to do them, uh, just so you can see what I'm up to. And then the next one is another one of Charlotte's again. They're looking great, really happy with those. And then I've got, I always buy too many potatoes, but then what I find is that a lot of people on my allotment site don't seem to have them for whatever reason. And so I just give my spares away. So uh, I've got Cara. So they have been a great hit over the last couple of years. And I'm growing these really as an alternative to Sarpamira. So they're quite blight resistant, not quite as blight resistant as Sarpamira, but my Sarpamira is now, they always seem to get some sort of disease. So it might not be late blight, but it's some sort of fungal disease. And so the plants tend to die back sometime in August. And I really want to keep them going until September. And because they're dying back in August, whilst I'm getting a nice number of potatoes, the size is quite low, it's quite small. So they're all kind of, uh, well, that kind of size really, the size of those seed potatoes, but those are looking lovely as well. And the last bag 
is another bag of cara, so I won't bother showing you those. Now, I, I don't grow potatoes <laughs> the way that everybody else does because I want a year-round supply of really nice, good condition potatoes of all different types. So I want general purpose potatoes, I want large baking potatoes, and I want small new potatoes. And in order to do that, you know, I've kind of developed a little bit of a system. It's not particularly impressive. It's just timings and growing techniques. And I've written all that up in my guide to growing year round potatoes, which you can take a look at. And it's free. It's just part of my ebook. It's just, you know, one of I don't know, 50 different growing guides that I've got in that ebook. Um, but it's, you know, it's, it's very simple, but you do need obviously like to start potatoes indoors. I generally just stick mine under the desk. It's just next to me here out of the way. Uh, I start them in fairly small containers. I've actually got one, let me get it. So that size, I put one potato in there and um, I wait, I'll, I'll leave it in under the desk until it breaks surface, it doesn't need any light. And then I move it to the grow lights behind me where they get some spillover light. Uh, so they're not directly underneath the grow lights, they don't need that. They just need a bit of light uh, and they grow nice little, little plants. So when they're about this sort of size, then I'll pop them on into their main containers. And a few of them will stay in the conservatory. Most of them will go to the polytunnel. They'll need fleecing, obviously, if there's any risk of frost. Some of them will go into the mini greenhouse, but at the moment that's full of potatoes uh, in containers, so there's no space for them in there. Um, but eventually some will go in there. And as I say, a few will stay in this conservatory. So the ones that stay in this conservatory are for my early baking potatoes. Those will be ready in May. Then I've got a batch that go in a cold frame. Those will be ready in June, July. Then of course my main crop, my second, what am I talking about? My early main crops then, those will be ready uh, in August. So that gives you a nice supply of large potatoes. In terms of my new potatoes, I've got the ones that are currently in the containers down the side of the house. Those will go until, as I say, sort of March, April time. Then I've got a batch that are in my mini greenhouse in containers. Those are the Christmas ones, so they're younger plants. Uh, and those will go into April. Then the Swifts that I'm starting in January, those will be ready, you know, towards late April and then all the way through May, June and July. And then my Charlotte's second earlies that I do outside, they'll be ready. So it all works out nice and neat. It's very low effort apart from watering. A lot of people ask me about what do I do with my spent potato compost? Well, generally speaking, I use it to mulch my beds. Uh, so all the back garden beds are all raised beds. They drop about two inches every year, take a lot of nutrients out of those beds uh, that by the plants and, you know, just generally uh, compost just sort of evap <laughs> evaporates into the air. It doesn't evaporate really, does it? But it uh, oxidizes into the air uh, or it just compresses and the worms take it deep down into the soil and uh, so they need to fill it up and mine are fairly young beds so they're sinking as I say about two inches every year that needs quite a lot of compost roughly speaking about the amount of compost that I get from my potato tubs and if I've got any spare then I just reuse that compost uh, into the next year but uh, that hasn't happened uh, very much yet. Quite a few of my containers are being used to grow things over winter. So there's quite a lot of uh, green garlic, for example, in those containers, some salad rockets, some leeks, bits and pieces like that. I'm probably gonna do a bit more of that over the years because it just seems a shame to have those containers just sitting there with compost in, uh, waiting to be used for mulch in the spring but actually could be used to grow stuff over winter. So I think that is pretty much it. I've talked about everything, as I say, ebook, linked in the description. And um, yeah, oh, one more thing, yes. I'm gonna chip them. So I just put them in trays like this and potatoes fit really nicely in these trays. I just pop the label 
in each segment so I know what it is. And let's just talk about chitin for a second. So is chitin really necessary? Well, for your main crop potatoes and your early main crop potatoes, not really, but it's a good way of keeping the potatoes healthy because otherwise they'll grow sprouts, they'll get long and leggy if you just leave them in a box. So chitin, that's the main benefit of chitin with your uh, main crop potatoes, just a good way to keep them healthy. So they want to be in a coolish place, lots of light, um, no, no risk of frost, and they'll, you know, they just stay in good condition until you want to plant them out in April. For your early potatoes, like your super early potatoes, anything you're going to start inside, and I do recommend you start inside because you get them off to a really quick start, mid up to take up any space really, just stick them in a corner, no problem at all. In about 10 days, they'll break surface. And that's really quick. And that's from a potato that's just like this. No spruts on it at all. And still in 10 days time, that will be breaking surface. So not a lot of point in chitting that if you can get it to start growing as a breaking surface even in 10 days. So for early potatoes, don't really worry about it. You can plant them now, no matter what the condition are. For your anything kind of that you're going to start in containers in a polytunnel or a greenhouse, so that's like your second succession of early potatoes, uh, those benefit from chitin because you're not going to put those out now because it's too cold. Uh, so get them started chitin now and then they're primed to grow. So as soon as they go into the compost, get some water, a bit of warmth during the day from the sun in your greenhouse or polytunnel and they'll start going and the chitin just gets them going just that little bit sooner. As I say, when you're starting them in the house, you don't need them sooner because they go straight away anyway. But when you're doing it in the cold, the greenhouse polytunnel, then you do benefit from them getting away really quickly. And for anything that you want early, that you're planting outside, again, chitin is really useful. So basically for your traditional sort of first earlies that you might be doing in early April, depends on when you get frosts. Um, I don't generally do mine in early April because I've got so many super early ones. But anyway, if you are doing them in early April, again, chitin is really beneficial because again, it's a great way to keep them nice and healthy between now and early April. And then they get off to a really fast start because they're kind of really primed for growth. So I actually do, for my sort of super early ones that I've already got growing in here, I started at the beginning of January, I did start chitting those back in December. And as you can see from this little video, um, they're, they're chitted quite nicely. And so they are already, some of those are already breaking surface under the desk and need to be moved under the grow lights. Ah, <sighs> well done. My name is Steve. This is the Seaside Kitchen Garden and Allotment Channel. And I'll see you soon.